Today's video is kindly sponsored by jerseyfifa.com, the website you need to head to right away to get yourself the latest high quality football shirts at an extremely affordable price. And what's even better than that, you can use code jerseyfifa at checkout to get 10% off your order. The link will be in the description, but again, I just want to say a massive thank you to Jersey FIFA for sponsoring the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel, where today I'll be doing analysis of yesterday's massive Premier League clash between Manchester City and Liverpool at the top of the league. And as we can see, both lineups were pretty much exactly what we would have expected, with Jesus on the right wing for City the only slight surprise on the team sheets. So, as we'd expect, Manchester City were very keen to play the ball out to build possession in their own defensive third. However, Liverpool pushed high in a 4-1 shape to put them under quite intense pressure. We can see this in these two pictures here, with Jota leading the press from the front, whilst the other support were just behind him, although at times Henderson also chose to push a little higher alongside Jota. Liverpool are usually very effective with their press. However, at times Henderson's positioning was naive, and as we all know, City have the players with the ball playing ability to cut through the press. Having managed to get through the press, City then looked to build possession in the middle third of the pitch in a 2-4 shape, with Bernardo Silva regularly dropping deep to form a double pivot alongside Rodri. Again, we can see exactly this in both pictures here, with Bernardo Silva forming a midfield two alongside Rodri, and their technical ability on the ball provided a platform for Manchester City to dominate the ball. The positioning of Bernardo was particularly interesting because we're used to seeing him play much higher, but yet again it just highlights the technical quality that these City players have in different roles. From here the fullbacks were then vital to the way that Manchester City looked to play, and we'll start on the right hand side where Jesus often looked to move infield, which then left room out wide for Kyle Walker to push into. We saw this same pattern on a few occasions with Jesus drifting inside which dragged Robertson into a narrower area, which as we can see left Walker with plenty of space to attack down the right hand side. Walker's willingness and ability to run up and down the pitch was useful for City in this way, and it meant that Mane was forced to try and track him into these areas, and that was just one way that the fullbacks affected it. However, the bigger impact from the fullbacks came down the left hand side through João Cancelo, who regularly looked to make runs in behind Trent Alexander-Arnold before receiving the pass. In recent weeks, City have focused a lot of their attacks down the left-hand side, although in this game in particular, it felt like they targeted Arnold, and in the first half, Cancelo got in behind the defence time and time again. Again, we all know that Cancelo is more than happy to make these forward runs, and it was his runs from deep that helped City to really exploit the Liverpool high line, particularly during the first 45 minutes. The fullbacks continued to have a massive impact on the game, even when they were in slightly deeper areas, thanks to their passing range which again regularly allowed them to play passes over the top of the defence. Again, this was something that we mainly saw down the left-hand side to try and get in behind Arnold, and a link-up between Cancelo and Foden was quite impressive to expose the Liverpool defence in the first half. It was the technical ability of Cancelo that really allowed this to happen, and during the first half he really did showcase just how technically gifted he is, and he was pretty key to everything City done. So we've seen that City were able to progress the ball reasonably easily and it got the two wingers into some really promising positions. However, the end product and the decision making wasn't quite right in these areas. In situations like this, there wasn't really anyone to aim for in the middle which made the crosses less effective. Whilst on the right, Jesus got into some really promising positions but his decision making was really poor. As I said at the start, the inclusion of Jesus was a little bit surprising. However, Pep was clearly right because Jesus exploited the high Liverpool defence, but the execution was just lacking. Despite mainly focusing the play out wide, City were also able to progress the ball through the centre of the pitch, thanks to the incredible dribbling and ball carrying ability of a certain Kevin De Bruyne. De Bruyne showed his quality extremely early on in the game as he skipped past Fabinho before firing a deflected shot into the back of the net, and again, as he has regularly in recent weeks, he showed his quality. I've said a few times this season that De Bruyne had a rather slow start to the campaign, but in the past couple of months he has proven his worth in some absolutely massive games, and his ball carrying was elite. Despite the brilliant attacking display from Manchester City, they did struggle as the game progressed, and Liverpool's defence seemed to tighten up much more in the second half, with Arnold in particular improving. However, despite this, Guardiola will feel as though he set his team up perfectly to expose the Liverpool defence, but for once, the Manchester City players just lacked that final bit of decision making. So now it's time to take a look at Liverpool, and they probably would have expected the intense counter press that they faced, with City regularly looking to quickly get men around the ball to put Liverpool under pressure. 
The intensity of the press did vary, as we'll see shortly. However, there were certainly occasions when City forced Liverpool into difficult situations, where they were quickly able to win the ball back in very dangerous areas. This is something that we've come to expect from Pep's side this season, and we've seen it in the biggest games time and time again this year, although again the press wasn't executed as well as normally. As a result of this, there were situations where City were then forced to sit back slightly, which as a result allowed Liverpool to play the ball out from the back, with the centre-backs having time on the ball to play out. The presence of Fabinho in particular helped this as City didn't want him to have too much time in the midfield, but as I said this did give players like Van Dijk more time on the ball to progress the ball out from the back. I'm sure by now everyone is very aware that Van Dijk is one of the best centre-backs in the world when it comes to playing with the ball at his feet, and as a result Liverpool looked to progress, but in a slightly odd way. Typically this is the stage of the video where I talk about Liverpool building possession in the middle third in a 2-3 shape, however that didn't happen, and Liverpool largely looked to bypass the second phase of possession. This is something that we've seen from Klopp before, especially in big clashes against Manchester City, but at times in the first half it just felt that it left Liverpool with a lack of control of the game. I think one of the main reasons was simply the personnel that were picked, with Liverpool's too much technical attackers left on the bench, leaving Liverpool with no one who was looking to receive the ball into feet. With none of the forwards looking to receive the ball into feet, it put greater pressure on Van Dijk and Thiago to progress the ball, but let's be honest they're two players that are more than comfortable doing this. This was something that we saw in the build-up for both goals, with Thiago switching the play for the first goal, whilst Van Dijk played another sweeping long pass in the build-up for the second goal as well. This was something that Liverpool took advantage of time and time again, with Thiago being the one Liverpool midfielder that really looked to put his foot on the ball before then looking to get the team pushing forward. Of course, playing these switch passes out wide allowed Salah to be brought into the game on the right wing, from where he then looked to try and move the ball in field, as did Mane from the left-hand side of the pitch. Personally, I thought that both Salah and Mane had really quiet games and their impact was extremely limited, but in that one big moment they showed the quality in the biggest moment to grab the important equaliser. As I said, despite the important work for the second goal, I thought that Salah had another really poor game on the ball, and I think it might be time we start putting question marks over his form. As a result, this put more demand on the fullbacks to provide the attacking threat, with Robertson pushing forward from left back into the final third of the pitch from where he then looked to cross the ball into the box. Again, Robertson wasn't able to get forward quite as much as what he usually would, but again he showed his quality in an important moment, and just his presence alone was always enough to cause problems for the City defence. Typically, it is Arnold that we tend to focus on, thanks to his ridiculous technical ability on the ball, but in this game, Robertson was the one that provided the greatest threat as he looked to deliver into the box. Despite all of this, this was by no means a vintage Liverpool performance, and particularly during the first half, they had a lot of unforced errors on the ball, and as I said, there was no link between the forwards and the midfield. Personally, if it was me, I would have gone with a slightly different attacking structure, with Firmino and Diaz coming into the side, and had Liverpool done that, I really think they could have gone on to win this game. Because trying to counter-attack in behind a player like Kyle Walker just isn't something that really works, and ultimately City nullified most of the Liverpool threat, especially on the counter-attack. However, despite watching the two attacks that made poor decisions, there was still so much quality on the ball that we saw four goals, thanks to some incredible moments of individual brilliance. Although as the game progressed into the latter stages, it did seem like both teams tired. And that of course left us with the 2 all draw, which leaves us in the exact same position in terms of the league table. And I'm really interested to hear your thoughts, so make sure to get into the comments down below to let me know who you think will go on to win the league this season. But back to this game, and personally I thought in the first half we were treated to a real Premier League classic, played at an absolutely ridiculous intensity. But this did, did seem to affect the second half as both teams seemed low on energy as the game progressed. And ultimately, I don't think that either team will be too disappointed with the draw, because it means that both teams are still in the title race. Ultimately, I do think the draw was the best for the neutral, maybe not as a one-off game, but for the title race, and it makes it very interesting as we head into the last stretch of the season. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.